Well, the Holy Gospel this morning are Jesus' words from St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Jesus says, Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet their bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. And as the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will be not enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Well, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our precious Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. This is certainly an exciting time of the year, isn't it? I mean, uh, uh, a time where uh, great things are happening among us, uh, uh, a time that is just amazing for our uh, community as you think about the scope of things. I mean, it's, it's uh, been pretty exciting and amazing around here. I mean, you think about uh, all the hype and uh, uh, the preparation that goes into, uh, and, you know, activities uh, that take place and then kind of the careful execution of uh, the plan and then to be able to see success. I mean, we have a lot to be grateful for. We have, we have a lot to be filled with gratitude that we've been blessed so greatly uh, by our God. It's just been an exciting exciting time for, for many of us. So exciting that in rehearsing my sermon over and over again, to the extent I've kind of lost my voice a little bit, but uh, uh, it's, it's been a fun time. Are you having fun? Yes. It's good to have fun together. I, no, I, of course, am talking about Tuesday's election. That's what I'm referring to. What were you guys thinking about this morning? Tuesday's election, that's what I'm talking about. I mean, the game plan, I mean, you saw, did you see any political ads on television? I mean, that's kind of the game plan, you know, the execution. You all went to the polls on Tuesday, and you voted, and there was a winner. Great success, right? And I think, in all seriousness, I think that our political system, the American political system, still provides great leadership in our world today, a leadership that is that is much needed, and so we celebrate that in, in gratitude for that as, as well. I think that the world still needs and wants this type of American leadership. I mean, you think about uh, the differing voices that go on during a political campaign, and everybody has an opinion and a position on, on a multitude of serious issues in our life together as as a people, I mean, you talk about the economy, you talk about the war on terror, you talk about health care, you talk about taxation. We're not all of the same mind on these issues. But we go to polls and, and we vote and we express our convictions and our hopes for the future and our love for this country. And it works. It works. It works. And what this says to me, at least the people that are called by the faith of the church, what it says that following Jesus Christ happens not just in the church, it happens not just on Sunday mornings, but that following Jesus Christ happens in the world. It happens when we go to the polls to vote. It happens in the boardrooms. It happens in classrooms. It happens where we share in all of our rooms with other people that we are called to live together in this life. 
And so it truly is a blessing. It truly, if we have a lot to be thankful for in this life. This morning, Jesus is telling a story to help his hearers understand what the kingdom of heaven is like or what it will be like. And he says it will be like ten bridesmaids, five who are foolish and five who are wise. So I just have a question for you today. Who wants to be foolish? All right, that's great. All right, now I got another question for you today to think about. Who wants to be wise? There we go. There we go, Logan. He's got both hands up. That's the question before us, really. Who wants to be foolish? Who wants to be wise? We, we all want to be wise, don't we? We all want to live lives of wisdom, not lives of uh, foolishness. We want to make wise choices and decisions in our lives. We want our world to be run in wisdom, not foolishness. We want our wisdom, not foolishness, to form us and help us to go to work together in the world that God has called us to live in and to love. So we want wisdom, not foolishness. We pray for wisdom from our God. Wisdom to do the right thing in our families, to do the right thing in our personal lives, to do the right thing in our lives of faith, in a community together of faith. We pray for wisdom to do the right things, to do our part, to make this place a better one, to make our community, to make our families, to make our church a better one for us and certainly for the generations that come behind us. So what is it that makes us wise? Well, things get a little bit complicated, I think, in the story that Jesus tells. The, the bridegroom is delayed, the bridesmaids, they wait, they get tired, they fall asleep, and then suddenly they're all roused by a shout. Look, here's the bridegroom, come out to meet the bridegroom. It's late, but still the bridesmaids, they hurry to greet the bridegroom, and since it's now dark outside, they adjust their lamps trimming their wicks and making sure that they have enough oil to last through the celebration of this great banquet that's coming. So what is the difference between being wise and being foolish, at least in this story that Jesus tells? The difference seems to be in the oil, in the oil of the lambs. I mean, the five wise bridesmaids seem to have the extra oil that is required for a long way for the bridegroom's arrival. I mean, they were the wise ones who were there kind of waiting for the bridegroom to return, and they lived their lives in faith. They lived faithfully in the meantime. So the difference between wise and foolish seems to be the oil. It seems to be all about the oil for our lambs. So what keeps your lamp lit? What is it for you? What keeps you going in your faith? What is that for you? Or what causes your light to flicker, maybe a little bit, in your life? These are all questions that Jesus has us consider today. As I think about these questions, my mind goes back to Christmas Eve every year here at Grace Lutheran Church. And there's a moment when we pass the light of Christ through you, the congregation. Do you remember that moment? I mean, I get to be up here and I get to, I get to sing with you that great hymn, Silent Night. And then, and then I get to see those individual candles from the flame that is, that is passed among all of you. Standing up here, I can see how the one light lights the other light from the Christ candle. And where we start out in a very dim church, that light grows and grows and grows throughout you, the people of God, the followers, the disciples of 
of Jesus. And you know, it's one of my favorite memories of Christmas. It's one of my favorite memories of Christ come among us in the church. And another amazing thing that I think about this passing of the light is how I find myself being able to pick out, to be able to recognize faces that are far away across the sanctuary. Faces that, that, that get lost in a crowd with the sanctuary lights even fully on, or even in the dim of light. Those faces get lost. But as those candles are passed, those faces you see are, are highlighted, and I can see them clearly on account of the light that is held in front of them. And at the end of it, all there is is a sea of faces, so many of them that are so distinct and recognizable, glowing from the lamps of light that they are holding, that you are holding. A light that did not come from you, but a light that was given to you, that was handed on to you. I think that is a moment that is warmer and more spirit-filled than most any bright and sunny Sunday mornings when we gather for worship. So we think about that light today and we think about that oil today. We come to realize that we do not provide the light or the oil for our lamps. It comes to us as a gift. We just get to receive it and to live faithfully with it, allowing that light to glow and to be seen through all of us, through our faces. In Jesus Christ, God came and gave us all that we need to keep our lights and our lives aglow. And this, as people of faith, is our greatest privilege and our greatest joy. So oil is not ours, but we have been given the joy and the privilege of carrying it. God is at work in our world, even and especially amid the challenges and setbacks and disappointments and tragedies, even in the great successes and celebrations in our life together. God is at work. And perhaps having discovered God out there ahead of us, God at work, God at work healing, God at work comforting, God at work caring for those in need. Perhaps we might even discover that we get to be part of that. That we get to shine a little bit of peace of light in all of that. Seeing and naming God at work in the everyday and the ordinary joys and sor sorrows in life, it doesn't get any better. In fact, it's pretty fun. It's pretty fun to be part of that. Having our lives filled with the goodness and the light of the Lord, and then being able to share that with others. Isn't that something to celebrate? Isn't that something to be filled with gratitude in? Isn't that fun? Yeah, there are 